not me. So super question. Okay, which one are we looking at right now? We're looking at Costilla County, Colorado. Awesome. APN 1000-7140. Awesome. This is the, the, the version that we're going to release, this is the bare bones of it. Statistically, there will be a many, many, many more number, up to 200, uh, or actually 300 stats, assessor stats on each property here. And then, of course, you can zoom in and zoom out, and the GPS coordinates will be in here, right here. So you can go in. This is a hell of a piece of property, by this the way. This is awesome. Hey, Andy. Nice job. This is Andy's, right? Yeah. Cool. Andy, you got your screenshots going there? <laughs> 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 Look at that. Talk about access. Yeah. So what's nice about the software is that it gives you the corner points here, you know, yeah. so um, and that all of that data, each of these corner points, these GPS corner points will be in the data set and then it'll be displayed over here. So you can actually then go back into if you want to. This is actually Google Earth. Go into Google Earth and, and uh, you know, take as many screenshots as you want and then we took the liberty of doing some altitude screenshots here on the bottom, but there'll be a lot more of these included in the product. So you really won't have to horse around with moving them around at all. So this, awesome. this is not to be one big, huge sales pitch on parcel fact, but we've gotten such a good response because people are having problems finding their own property that I just decided to do display it. Thank you. Can you show us, um, Texas there's, I'm having issues with Texas. So I think you got it's these the ward ones. Sorry? You got the Ward County one? Did I'm you try that trouble one? With Texas, Joe. Oh, that one too. Okay, got it. Okay, cool. I'm gonna it's, move on here. Some more questions. I don't believe it's a database. I believe it's the APN. They do do some funky stuff. Okay. Um let's I'm gonna clear these out. We'll get we can circle back around. Um you you me? Okay, I'm not sure if that's the name or a code here, but which paid websites are the best? Well, Landpin is, no, just kidding. Landpin is unpaid. I know, it's unpaid. <laughs> is Landwatch the best? How many should I sign up for? Gosh, you know what? This is a, this is a good question. You want to be able to, you want to market all over because what are you trying to do? Reach as many people as you can. So um, Landwatch is a good site. Landis Farm is a good site. Gosh, have something on eBay, your own site, social media. Um, I mean, there, heck, people are still having good luck with Craigslist and, and you know, the Facebook marketplace, not crazy. So, you know, just get a system going. That's what we do. Um, and get in the habit of when you create one posting, put it all over on the planet. So what's going to happen, what we're, we are creating, I think that's, I think you're, I don't recognize this name and I'm guessing on your question that you're new to our community. Yeah. So what we are producing right now, which will really save everybody a lot of time. I can't talk here. Landpin is our answer to solve this for everyone. Um, so landpin.com is our own site. We officially launched it in January. There's so much property on there already. It's currently only for Land Academy members and they get to post their properties for free. All these mapping tools and the things that you see are going to be included uh, in land pin and and they'll have access to all that so what's going to happen is they'll be able to eventually you go that'll be your first place to post that's our goal post here yeah. first because in land pin you'll be able to a lot of the information will automatically populate it for you you know some Id images some maps and things and then also on there i don't know if you want to show it for us all jack but um already right now exists in land pin i can already send it to my facebook click one click it goes on my facebook one click it goes to my Twitter you know and there's already a bunch of social media accounts that are already loaded sure, so I can right. already yeah it's like right now when I put one property in on Landpin, I can send it five different places this is and how, then copy and yeah. paste it to the other ones exactly so this is a first generation of Landpin, and um, if you go into any of the properties and uh, whether they're sold or not whether it's your property or not um, this is if you're brand new uh, and you're a part of our group, this is a way, this is exactly how to seriously get yourself um, promoted and make you make it, make yourself look like you're a deal maker. You're buying and selling a ton of property. So I'm just going to take the, the first one here with uh, Sarah Pearson. I clicked on it. I go to the bottom and I hit Facebook. I log in. 
and I post it. I post it public. Post it Facebook. Gonna, she's going to sell this really fast now because you just did this. I and I just made her the feature of property this week. You did it? You, how <laughs> yeah, do you do that? I'm busy now. You can show me later. Okay. Anyway, you can do it on Twitter and all uh, what we have here. So now on Facebook, that thing got plastered everywhere because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all connected up. So if you know any, I mean, if you, if you go, if you do this and post it to Facebook for yourself or to the public, and then take that posting on your own, uh, everybody knows, believe me, you know more about Facebook listeners, you know more about Facebook than I do. Mm -hmm. Go to your own posting and then just regurgitate it. What, what's the form? How do you say that? Share it, share, share it, it to it your groups and pages. Share it to your groups, share it to your friends, share it to not your friends, the public. I mean, if you haven't done so already, join all the groups in Facebook that uh, you know, there's a ton of land groups in Facebook mm -hmm. and I'll pull them up here in a second. Cool. We hey. had a call, interestingly enough, and I'll try to be brief. We had a very prosperous uh, podcast slash call with a, some, some members that have figured out how to sell property on Facebook to non real estate members. You know, they just go to where the property is located. They post it in all the groups that are geographically specific to that area. It could be like quilting in Oklahoma. You know, they said that's how they sell a ton of property. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You want to, do you mind jump toggling back over and seeing if you can find Ron Mayfield's one property here in Oklahoma? I love Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll like handle it. this actually, Jill. I, I'm, I'm You're not, just going to go along I'm with I'm not this. blowing it off yet. Don't, don't erase them. Okay. See how, see these APNs? Uh-huh. It's, it, it's causing database issues. So okay. I'm, that's why it's still in the beta. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna skip over those questions and go to the other ones. Okay, yep. cool. All right, so Jess, Jessica followed up with um, a question to her nonprofit, who signs? That, they, they know, and to be honest with you, Jessica, the times I've done it, I haven't asked, like I, I know that I'm working with a church and I'm calling the secretary and I'm talking to enough people that I, I will say that I've trusted them and I've, and I, um, they have provided stuff like, you know, I, I have to, I have asked them, you know, who signs for this? Oh, it has to be the head of the board and the vice president. And they give me their names and all that good stuff because I'm creating the documents. And, and I don't, I haven't worried about them because you know what? I've done my homework. It's, it really is a, a brick and mortar church and there are people and I've called the office and it's established. So if anything kooky happened, I know I could go back to them you know, in 90 days and say, hey, so we needed to, I don't know, whatever, but I never had it happen. So, but like I said, they will provide it. They, yeah. they know, they know when you ask them who has to sign these documents, they'll say, oh, it has to be so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. So you have to have all these three names on there. They'll all be together for the meeting on the third and they can all sign it then. That's typically how that goes. Right. So cool. I've, I've had nothing but pleasant experiences buying property from nonprofits. Totally. Totally, totally. Okay. Um, curious to know, because it was donated to them too, by the way, and they're happy to get something out of it. Right. And you're, and they don't want to keep track of it and pay the taxes and, you, you know, be sure you ask them too, what else do you have? <laughs> because they might have more. Exactly. <laughs> so that's good. Then it's one board meeting and not six. Uh-huh. Exactly. Okay, uh, Yas for ass. Yeah, yes, these are good questions. Curious to know, this is, do you want to hear, this is you to Jack. Uh -huh. If land pin will ever be modified, it, modified <laughs> to make search functions such as narrowing down by county as an option. Also curious to know if the tool by which a buyer searches for acreage will ever be simplified to a simple input field such as opposed to the bars you scroll. The scrolling bars are difficult to finesse. Good feedback. Yeah, super great feedback. Sucks. Um, I'm copying that. Oh. Absolutely, yes. Um, it's on our radar completely to search uh, by county. Um, in fact, it's, uh, it's in there backwards right now. Uh, again, these are first, the first generation. This is, that's, by the way, that's why we're not releasing products that are unfinished. This is an unfinished product. It's called an MVP in the industry. That, um, so, and it worked. So now we're going to perfect it and then really release it uh, in, in a future date. But yeah, uh, I agree with you on the function of the sorts, the county sort. Absolutely. Yep. That will be, it'll be more intuitive. 
Uh, the sliding functions are diff difficult to finesse. I'd, I'd be interested to hear where, uh, you know, what device you're using. If you're using a, a, a you know, a first generation iPhone, I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I just copied that for our tech people too, just so you know. Perfect. Thank you. I can That's pass, awesome. pass that on. This is great feedback. Okay. Um, Kyler, we have, boy, we have, you asked for it, Jack. You got it. There's a bunch of APNs <laughs> here. Back I'm up not, for you. I'm in, in the back here trying to f look up the ones that work. Okay, cool. All right. Brian asked, newbie question about sales tax on selling vacant properties. Do we? Mm -mm. Do we charge sales tax? Nope. Or is it something that gets handled by the buyer and the seller on their annual tax as far as capital gains or losses? Jack, do you have a canned response? Yeah. About how this works. In this country, there's no transaction tax associated with the real estate exchange. There's no sales tax. Uh, in Canada, there's a, in Canada, you have to pay cat tax out of escrow. In this country, there's nothing like that at all. As far as capital gains go, you need to talk to your accountant about that. When you're in the business as heavily as we are, we treat it as ordinary income because that's really what it is. And that's stood the test to the, to the test of time and, and all that stuff. So if you do one or two deals a year, that's up to you and your accountant. My opinion on that would be it's probably a subject to capital gains tax. Thanks. What Jill and I have done forever is we always take salaries. So if you set up an LLC, the right way to do it, and you don't shouldn't do it in the beginning, but long story short, set up an LLC, uh, set, a, set up payroll with ADP. So you're taking a salary and you're paying payroll taxes and then finesse the tax scenario however you deem appropriate personally appropriate on the back end Perfect. there's no sales tax with property though that's the takeaway this is cool thank you adam adam shared a little tip he said that capital gains require you to hold the asset for one year prior to sale so we're not doing that traditionally so we don't have to joe it's, yeah. don't worry your pretty little head joe oh i know <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, this is, that's why I say Jack. <laughs> I get a paycheck, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a little more than that. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is, this is my extent of, uh, Jack and I do different kinds of payroll things, and I do have a W-2 paycheck, so I just say that, and I don't get involved in all of that, but these, are, so these are, but these are really good questions. And this is lots of good stuff that I don't think it's crazy to share in success plant too, to talk with each other and, you know, solve these problems together right? So as, as everyone's making more money. And so it's, it's all good stuff. All right. Um, it's Samin or, or how to pronounce it. I have my first accepted offer with the clean title but not sure I should move on it. Oh, accepted offer is a thousand dollars, but it's landlocked and unbuildable. I love these terms because there's a lot of things you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, 1.56 acres and remarketing it could be tough. It also has $1,700 in back taxes. Now I have my attention, so I'm not sure about this. Is it really a buyer for all parcels or is this a stretch for the first deal? I know what I would say. What would you say? It might be a stretch. For the, yeah, this is your first offer. Now get 10 more mm -hmm. or, or 20 more. Line them all up on a spreadsheet. Now go back and look at them and well, see what you have. My question is, what, what can you sell it for? That's true, you too. Know, what are other people selling them for on, uh, on the internet? Good point. If this was like our conversation with Michelle today, and it's one and a half acres, in Florida, it's worth fifty thousand dollars. Right. I might. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna run to the bank for a thousand dollars with seventeen hundred dollars in back taxes. You know. But yeah. and as far as landlocked, what do you mean by landlocked? Just because there's not a paved road right, right next to it doesn't mean it's landlocked. You have to dig a little deeper to do that. And unbuildable. Okay. If it's on the side of a cliff, yeah. But yeah, I mean, even then, I mean. Talk to Kathleen. We've talked. We just were looking at an island. We were looking at an island property last week, and it looked gorgeous. And I've sold, bought, and sold island stuff that floods. 
but for the right guy, there you go. Right. But I wouldn't jump on this. You're right. Hey, glad you're doing your homework. Now put that aside. See what else comes in. <laughs> this is uh, the Boone County, Arkansas. I'm having APN problems with uh, Texas, and we all know that there's issues with Texas, and it's not this database. It's just there's zeros preceding and post pre and post seeding uh, all of these Texas properties. So I'm, I'm trying to work it out in the background. Okay. This is a Boone County, Arkansas property that that is for uh, Curia. Cool. This is That's a Boone. Sweet. Look at that. Three. There's three adjoining. Wow. See, like, look at this. Like, you point out on that, Jack, that some people say landlocked, but to me, boy, that looks like access. Oh, this is, there's huge access here. And then uh, when you ever you look at these maps, if, if, again, if you're new, see these, how, there's a lot of stuff going on around here. So they've somehow worked out power, water, and all that stuff. This is a good, these are smoking lots, Carrie. Carrie, I love those <laughs> with the trees. Yeah, me too. Look at that. Super awesome. Mm -hmm. Those are great. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. So, and I was going to, this is awesome. Jessica followed up that uh, the nonprofit has a lot and some of them are a thousand oh. acres. <laughs> Just, we don't quite have the funds for that one. I, uh, I, well, hey, now hold on a moment. Jessica, also, yeah. by the way, um, as you dig through this kind of stuff, think, I mean, think about this one. This is the stuff that people come to us with when they have, hey, I'm talking to this group and they have, you know, 50 or, or 100. I'm working with somebody right now on an acquisition that involves 169 parcels. Why? Because right. now at the end, it's going to be worth quite a bit of money. So as you dig into this, Jessica, um, I don't have a lot of free time, but... <laughs> Turns out we have a lot of money and I love thousand acre par parcels. So mm -hmm. I would love to, uh, love to talk about it with you. Yeah. If, as you get the information, if you want to send that to us, that would be great. So thank you. Hey, that's one of the reasons we started Land Academy mm -hmm. because we're trying to create business partners. So, uh, and it's working like a dream. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people over the last couple of years have said, if you guys are so smart about this, why, you know, why don't you just keep it to yourself and, and be on your merry way? Well, we've never done more real estate deals ever than we are right now. So, mm -hmm. and it's all because of the, of the members. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And everybody wins. Yeah. So great. Okay. So I'm going to skip past these APNs here. Um, Gregory asked, help on a pricing strategy, trying to gauge a target offer and sale price different than taught. Aha. Are you ready, Jack? Okay. My market is somewhat active within 30 miles of a larger city and has a lot of available parcels. Typical parcels are 35 to 40 acres and appeal to homeowners that are connected to the larger city. End users are homeowners that build a primary residence or sometimes small custom builders. Buyers also sit on the land for a while while building. Properties are listed on the MLS about 5 to 15% above the completed sales prices, which are approximately $1,000 an acre. The retail sales are one year or more in the market. The lowest sales price I found are 60% of retail and the buyers are local brokers, investors, and insiders that flip uh -huh. the land close to retail. Just like you. Uh-huh. I did find one flip on that that sold for 80% of retail in about 45 days. What offer price and spread should I attempt to hit? Preliminary strategy is offer 40%. 45% of the retail, $18,000. Buy at 50%, which is about $20,000. Mm -hmm. Sell 75 to 80%, 30 to $32,000, approximately $10,000 margin. Yep. Similar to selling a house to flipper, are my percentages okay or do I need to adjust? I think your percentages are fantastic. I have two suggestions. Number one, build in a local, local A-list by of property owners. And this is what Joe and I do. Before you go into a market like this, because we have you have access to all the data, I'm assuming Gregory's a member, Joe. Um, I hope if you're not, I would love for you to be a member. I yeah. think you are, because the way that you're approaching this is, is perfect. Um, because you have access to all the data, make yourself a list of, I don't know, 25 of the largest property owners in this little area you're working in, and you can pull their names because you know who owns everything in real quest. 
get him email addresses and reach out to him. And then um, I personally then, my second tip here is would I'd go in a little bit lighter than this. I would go in not at 45% of retail, but I'd go in around 35%. So 15 grand, I think I would max out in for an acquisition price on the first round. You might have to send multiple mailers on this kind of thing. That's what Joe and I do uh, on a little tiny market deal like this mm -hmm. instead of, you know, Luke Smithing it and sending an offer to everybody in the state. And then uh, I would probably, I would probably sell it for less. I would buy them for less and sell them for less to, to the guys that, want to be the end user slash are may possibly wholesalers on that a list so the, the whole point is to get them coming back for more mm -hmm. those are my hey, suggestions gregory I love baker your approach, man. I love your approach to this you is not a member but he's on my radar oh. so you i've seen some stuff gregory in success plant for like a year now <laughs> <laughs> so i um gregory we would love to have you in our group. You're doing everything right. Yeah, seriously. So good job. And hey, glad glad we opened up the call to you. So you've been probably watching and not been able to get in the call. And right now for this time period, Jack has opened it up. So glad you are here. Good. All yeah, right. Yeah, we'd love to have smart people. Yeah, totally. Okay, Andy says, if RealQuest shows nothing for the latest recording date, should I download the data? Yeah. Because sometimes it's... The latest yeah. recording date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has nothing to do with sending someone a letter. The list that you're staring at in, in uh, RealQuest or in Title Pro is the actual assessor's database slash treasurer's database. And that's how they send out taxes every year. Uh, notes for property taxes. So the latest recording date has that... Take that out of your radar, off your radar, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It really has nothing to do with the sort. In fact, if there's no latest recording date and it was recorded in like 1893 before there were computers, that's even better, I think. Mm -hmm. How many times have you talked to the original owner of a property, Joe? A million. Yeah, it's true. You know? It's, it's, it's funny how many times I don't have to do a lot of due diligence because they really have owned this. The same thing for 30 years. I'm looking at a deed from 1965, right. you know, kind of thing. It really exactly. happens. Like, so I, well, okay, I'm done doing my homework there. I don't have to check that one. So there's mm -hmm. a file in the land acquisition office somewhere that there are a lot of people who sell property to us where the, there was a poster like in the fifties, in the forties or fifties with a, like an old car and stuff. You know, that's your original flyer when that property got subdivided. Yes. It's really cool. Yeah, if you guys get a hold of that stuff, sometimes yeah, I, these people hang on to their whole file like when they the newspaper clipping from when they bought the property that you right, know from right. years ago, and it shows all these trees, and I love getting that stuff. So very cool. All right, hey, you know what? I'm noticing we have a lot of people here that are not in our group, and I'm glad you guys are here. So thank you. And I looks like Jason Coachard is one of them. Um, his question is. Is it common for land traders to share their version oh, of their Platinum Buyers Club mailing list with each other in order to cross pollinate and increase and reach both for both parties? If so, is this something people pay each other commissions for or is it pretty friendly? I don't think they do that, but we do. They don't share anything. Uh, the, yeah. the industry, I think like most industries, it's very secretive and stuff. I mean, Joe set out, Joe and I set out to, that's just not how we, we are. Right. So, and the other thing too, is that if you got a good buyer, he, he, the last thing the guy really needs is 7,000 emails. What ends up happening is it gets abused, Jason. That's the problem. If a guy wants to buy property in a specific county in Alaska, and all of a sudden 15 people are sending him properties about Arizona and, and whatever, it, it's a huge turnoff. So uh, unfortunately, I, I wish it was like that, but it, it I mean, I, I don't know. I hope you're on the call really early, but because, it's so easy to buy to set set up your own list. It's really silly. Mm -hmm. I wish the answer was the other way, though. Right. Good. 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 Okay. Hey, an update on the APN thing with these Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm the the coverage map and the and the uh, database is showing these properties in there, but the APN schemes are all different. So I will work this out. This is why we're in pre-launch and not launch. Everything else is coming out okay. 
Um, I'm sorry. I'm answering. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's some classic stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> let me, okay. Let, you know what? I'm going to tell you right now what I'm doing, and I'm just going to share it with everybody here. Okay. It's not a big secret. I was writing Jason back a little private note to welcome him and share with him a coupon code. We'll share and it with the group. I just, just that's what I was going to do. I'm like, so I was yeah. typing it. So, all right. Anyone on this call who's not in our world and you want $500 off, go and type in two months free. Put in TWO months free. All run together. It doesn't matter if it's upper or lower case. And that'll take $500 off. So thank up. Oh, well, thank you. We said, okay, wait, you typed it to me. You got to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, sorry. Jack. <laughs> Check. So thank you. Okay. So very, very cool stuff. All right. Um, okay. So we have a bunch of, let me keep going to leave these APNs here and you'll tell me when you, when you find them, Jack. Yeah. I just pulled up Apache County on the screen. Okay. Uh, it doesn't look like it's sharing anymore. Hmm. I'm solving it. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, so we're looking at something. Oh, good. Yeah, we're looking. Well, we're looking at Tampa. This is we're looking at. No, that's the Mail City. So this is Apache County. Oh, excuse Arizona. me. Arizona, Mail City. Okay. Uh, the owners in this there. So. Okay. Cool. I know this. I know this guy. Talk about extremely well. Look at this access. He. I bought tons and tons of properties from him. Cool. Yeah, this is a pretty cool property. Actually, it's um, in Apache County, Arizona. It's tr pretty well treed. Mm -hmm. A little bit of snow on the ground, Jill. Mm -hmm. Water on the ground. Oh, wow. Whose is this? Well, IK. I think that's well, Tracy. Tracy. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Oh, my God, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Tracy, this here, here, Tracy can tease us. Tracy, I'm going to throw you under the bus a little bit. She's, She's so good. Tracy's all concerned about everything. You know, some people, when they join, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I did it right. I don't know if I did it right. I'm freaked out. I'm freaked out. And then it's like, oh, I'm buying property. Everything's uh -huh. okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Tracy's doing great. Oh, okay, that's cool. All right, we have a follow up. Oh, Jean. Okay, it's Jean. Oh, the Yas. Okay, okay good, good, good. Um, thank you, Jean. When I said the scrolling bars on land pin were difficult to finance, I meant, for instance, if you want to search for only properties between like five and ten acres, oh, it's hard to get that specific. The bars are easy to move, oh, yes, but difficult yes. to finance. I gotcha. Okay, thanks. That's super clarified. Thank you. Thank you. Because I love the bar, the bar thing. Um, yeah, we'll spread that out for you. Seriously. Well, you know, would could we? I'll, I'll tell you the um. You know the buoy. If you guys, if you see the buoy on our um, different Here, I'll, sites, I'll, I'll pull it up. That would be a good thing to. I'm gonna send it to him anyway, Gene. But feel free to use that buoy to put in suggestions. I'm thinking, how can we get these messages to our tech team? And the buoy would be a great way to do it. See this buoy down here? It's it's a knowledge base, and if you type in anything like anything you can think of, we're building a huge knowledge base on how to post property, what, uh, what to improve. In fact, I will put a, what improvement, uh, what to improve area in here. So that these buoys are in all of the sites. Click on that. that. We click on the send a message for me, please, Jack. Mm -hmm. Cause then it's like, say, no, but see the bottom of that send a message. Click. There you go. So there you go. So there, if you don't find it, like there would be your way to reach out to our tech team, Gene. And you could even, so everyone, if you find something, yeah. you know, the, any improvements, or little glitches, I don't know. Yes, Alert absolutely. them here, because it goes right to the tech team and bypasses us, which is what we want. <laughs> and, and usually, <laughs> <laughs> and usually gets fixed really quickly, so. Yes, because yeah. if you send it to me, by the time I get it to them, so this is better. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, um, Tracy said, oh gosh, Tracy, this is so good. I just got seven offers signed, <laughs> four from one seller and three from his brother. Oh my gosh, 
I sent payment and the deed to them for the parcels. The parcels are contiguous to each other. Oh, and connected. All are two and a half acres. Wow. How do you suggest I market the parcels individually or all together? Both. Mm -hmm. And I put in the posting, like I'll put in the in, in an individual posting that this can be purchased in conjunction with this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, you know, and so they can read that in the posting too. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fantastic. Great. Some people love properties altogether. Some people love them real split up. I personally love the split up thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to see a lot of them, um, a lot of options, you know, and then you give them, you want to buy five acres, two and a half acres, 10 acres. I have several. Uh -huh. What would you like? Oh, so right. You know what else? And when someone calls you on that, Tracy, I've often told them, Hey, you know, if they call you on the one, I've done this, I've sold, you know, a couple of the, to the same person and then they could go out there and stand on it, figure out which one they really want to keep. And then I've taught, I've told them, you know, and they like, they love this. I could stand on it. Which one has a better view, whatever. And then they're going to build on this one and then sell the other one or even just say, save it. So no one's going to block their view, you know? Right. There you go. Okay. Uh, so we have some more APNs for you. Brian said, I read in an online in an online article that if a seller sells a property at loss, which hopefully applies to us, uh, they may be they may be eligible to a deduction on the annual taxes, a reverse of the capital gains tax. Seems like something to add as a selling point and wondered what you thought about adding that as a sales strategy. I just don't go there. They know yeah. that. Um, and I'll add an example to that in a second. Yeah, go go ahead, Joe. You're you're totally on there. I, I agree with you. Also, I read about that one year mark just mentioned is that if you sell a property within a year, then it's short term capital gains and not regular capital gains, which are taxed at ordinary income rates. So perhaps even if you're not an LLC, you might still treat it like an ordinary income. Well, let me go to part A. So part A is, um, yeah, at a loss. Um, I've had pe I never get into that conversation because yeah, I don't want to go there with somebody. But I have had sellers tell me outright that I need, I just need a purchase agreement just showing this from you. And, and I said, absolutely. And can we, you know, I had a guy bought a multiple properties from him and he, it was like 25,000. I don't know how much money it was, but whatever the property, it wasn't that much money, but whatever it was, he said, can we word it where I bought, sold this one for this much, this one, and we divided it up so he could go back to his accountant and show the loss on each individual property. I could care less. I'm helping the guy out, you know, right. and everybody wins because he, what he gave me, I turned around and made so much money on, but he needed to get it off his plate because it was the end of the year. It was December 27th, whatever it was, it was crazy. And that's what we did. Right. So, and then the second part, I, that's all I think for your accountant. So are you with me on that, Jack? A hundred percent. Um, the second, yeah, you don't want to, the whole point of this, the, this business model is not to talk to them that much anyway. They're either going to sign it or they're not. I mean, and you ask anybody here who sent more than two or 3,000 letters out and they're going to say, if you don't talk to them that much, you're going to, if you send, keep continuing to send letters out, you're going to narrow down. All you're going to do is just do the, like I did. You know, you just answer the ones that, uh, that got signed. Right, Joe? Exactly. On capital gains. And that's, that's kind of beyond the scope of this, uh, this talk today. Well, you know, and I just, it just, I never want to, I don't want to, I don't want to have that on my offer letter and I don't want to say that to anyone. I don't want to insult anyone. I don't even want to, I don't want to get into that conversation because next thing you know, I can, they're going to be asking me about how to file their taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. No, cause they will. This and is what I don't happens. want to do that. This is what happens with Jill. The, oh, the, no. on, after about 15 minutes, they start saying, well, when you're done with Steve, can you come on over to my house? Because I like you more. <laughs> oh, thanks. For some reason, they, they just think, Jill, you know, that I, it's just funny to me. It cracks me up. Like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Exactly, Jill. Remember that guy? <laughs> I had a guy. Oh, my. He tried to lure me away to work for him. Yeah. Do you remember this? <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, and it was so funny. He and I don't think because it turns out he was he another investor, owner. right? And I was and so our our offer landed on his desk, 
So in the conversation where he shared with me, no, I'm not interested in selling at this, but, uh, but then he found out who, who, who I worked for, what I was doing. And next thing you know, he's sending, he's like, why don't you come work for me? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> but it was really, and he was persistent. Do you remember this? Yeah, I do actually. I a guy would call, like he did some follow-up calls to try to steal me to go work for him, with him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But that was really good. All right. Um, Luke asks, Latest recording date, oh, he's adding a thing, is when the, when the real quest got the data, not when something was recorded. Yeah, I, was, I saw you. that. Thank you, Luke, for clarifying. Thanks, Thanks for answering. And then he goes on to say, uh, it won't return any, any, I would just put it out of your mind, actually. Mm-hmm. And Luke's right. You want the yeah. largest data set you can get that's accurate. Mm-hmm. He's saying when, his, when you search counties that have no latest recording date, they hardly produce any data. Right. So all good information so am i running out of questions except for apns texas apns aren't going to happen and uh there's some the coverage map which i'm going to produce here in a second is really strong for texas there's one two three four five six counties out of 250 that that aren't covered so there's an apn scheme scenario that the database is not reading correctly and it's not any fault of ours. It's just the it's the assessor's database is set up differently. So long before we launched this, I'll crack it. So I'm sorry, Kyler, about Culbertson, Texas, but we'll figure it out. And uh, also Luke on mm-hmm. Ward County. Well, I have a I have a question. I'm pulling out. So there's a way, Albert, to put him. You need to put these in the Q and A. But I'm out of questions right now, so I'm going to just read yours out of the note you sent here about when someone cancels. This just happened. Were we just talking about this with Michelle? I think, I think we talked about this today when someone cancels. Yeah, we did. When someone cancels on a terms contract and says, it's okay for you to keep the deposit. Do you give them a specific form to sign or just say, thank you and walk away? The latter. Yeah. And we just talked about this because Michelle, I had a call from somebody. What? I think they were paying for two properties and they couldn't afford them both. And so they decided to pay off one. Michelle, remind, correct me if I'm wrong here. But it was funny because he took the property back, sold it for more. Well, it, it turned out that he had actually already had a buyer buying some other properties in the same area that like right at the same time was saying, hey, do you have any more? Right. And it turns out Michelle was able to go, as a matter of fact, I do. I'm just taking one back. Are you interested? And it was like, you know, more money the next day, cash uh, kind of thing. So that worked out great. In, in, in our experience, when, when they stop paying, they're kind of more afraid that you're going to come after them, like, like repossess a car, you know, and like, you know, and, and ding their credit or something because they committed to this and now they're not following through. So I, you know, I, and which of course we never do, that's not how we roll. So, so they're, our experience has been, they've been very happy and, and have said, I'm sorry, God, I just can't do it. I, I have to back out. Right. You well, know, kind of thing. And I'm knocking on wood when I say this and all these years, I've never had anyone come back and say, mm-hmm. this didn't work out at all. I want my money back or I want, you know, they, they just go dark for some reason. Mm-hmm. That's well, a good know, question, actually. You know, we haven't, that hasn't mm-hmm. come up. It should come up more. It should be a concern in somebody's, on most people's minds. But mm-hmm. it just doesn't come up. It's good. Well, thank you, Albert. He now he got in the in the question and he said that's exactly what happened to me. He bought two and can only afford one. So now this is all up to each individual. But if I had a guy, I would work out I mean, this is all up to you, but I might be inclined to say, Hey, you prepaid X you're paying me faithfully on this parcel. You can't afford this one. Tell you what because of my fees or whatever, I don't know. I might, I might credit you an extra something on this one because then, then you know that person's going to stay with you and pay that one off to the end. Yeah, it's just like my acquisitions. The more that you deal with them and help them and, and pay mm-hmm. attention to them, the, the more they'll, they'll work it out with you. Exactly. And I always, when they come to me and say, oh my gosh, something just happened. You know, I, I, I can't pay this month. Can we, is there anything we can do? I'm a heck yeah kind of person. Yeah. Don't worry about it. We'll add a month on the end. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's cool. So, um, Tracy said, 
how do you close a deal on payments terms? Do you need to record with the county before the payments start or after the payments are completed? Great question. There's two ways to sell a property on terms. Uh, you can do it through a contract and or a land contract. There's a lot of different names for it, but let's just call it a contract where you, they sign a contract, you sign a contract, and it says that they're going to make X amount of payments. And it didn't, the property in that case never gets recorded in, until the end, until the very, very end. The second way is a deed of trust, and it's exactly the opposite. Right at the very beginning of the deal, they put the down payment. It's usually done by an escrow agent. The person puts the down payment down and uh, it gets recorded at the county. And then just like a mortgage, it's exactly how your house deal got done. You should, if, if you're out west here, there's different ways to do it out east. It's called a deed of trust. The, their drawback is that if the deal unravels, it costs thousands of dollars to get it back in like escrow fees and stuff to get it back into your possession. So for this asset type, uh, us in this group, we usually avoid a deed of trust. I've been burned really bad doing deeds of trust. Because it's expensive. Yeah. And it's a lot of paperwork and stuff for a mm -hmm. small asset. Mm -hmm. And and I, I never have issues with the, with our way. Everybody's cool. They know what's coming. And, and I tell them, they're so happy because I tell them, go ahead and start using on it, camping on it today if you want. You're making payments on it. Go for it. And they're like, yay. So there you go. Yep. Um, okay, got it. Albert said he bought the other one in, in cash for, in full. Okay. Oh, good. There you go. Well, then you're, oh, so you're he good. You could afford it. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of funny. <laughs> so, so that worked out. All right. Any other things you want to, do we have anything that we needed to share today? I'm trying to think my dates are the big thing. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's huge. Every on the first of every month we'll be releasing, uh, according to the schedule on landinvestors.com one product a month. Did you show us that page? Yeah, I did. I can pull it back up. We pull it back up, please. We've never ended a call on time ever. I know. I think we still have people that we got the time change. Kind of, kind of goofed. Or it's spring break and nobody's in town. Oh. That could be going on. So if you go to Land Investors and you just click on the link to all the products for, that are going to be released, you just click on the website itself. And it shows you when you're 38 days out from uh, releasing parcel effect and on and on Yay. and on. Every product. Thank you. Jack had fun doing that. <laughs> getting that set up there. You know what ends up happening? After about getting the same question from, and then they're, they're always, always good questions. You know, hey, when are you going to release this? After you get that question 10 times and you get tired of answering it then you do something about it. <laughs> exactly. So we All did. Right. <laughs> Blake, you just asked a great question. Blake asked about Jill Live. Will you please scroll down and let me show you where Jill Live ranks on the list here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, look, it's dead. look, I don't even have that. Oh, you guys, <laughs> killing me, killing me. Oh, that's where Jill Live ranks on the, on the list coming. here. Yeah, well, actually, we go I back. Did. Go back I to the other. Well, and it I, shows. Yeah, okay, they way. gave me. They gave me. Okay, here's what's happening, Blake. Great question. Jack and the tech team gave me September. They're like, oh, we'll <laughs> slot you in here. I'm like, what the heck? Now, having said that, what am I doing right now? My 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 company and the scripts and stuff are being finalized this week we've been communicating back and forth what do you want this situation what do you want that situation so it is being tested with us first and then in the next couple of weeks i have a beta i have an early adapter group adapter group they're gonna do it next and then we're gonna roll it out so there's a really really good chance it's yeah. not gonna be september but they slotted me for september right now I mean, so. jill's gonna jill um is taking them this is her company and she's she's taking a different approach and i actually really appreciate that she's taking a non-tech approach a total human approach and each little part of your live will be released as she said deems it appropriate the first one i think jill stop me when i'm wrong the first one is answering your phone mm -hmm. there's a lot of back office functions that jill live will eventually do but the simplest one is 
replacing pet life. Mm -hmm. And really good question. I don't have a price yet, but I, I love that survey that I did a couple of weeks ago. Thank you everyone for sharing all that information. And I'm, I'm going to come in on, and I'm going to come in under anything else out there. Cause that's how we roll <laughs> yeah. with a product specific to us, you know, and you will know, and what's so great about it too. It's right here in the States. It's right here in California. Yeah. And I'm going to, I literally, and I'm doing this now too, Blake, I can go sit down and listen to their phone calls if I want and I can tweak it and make it. So it's going to be, it's going to be exactly what we want at, and they're at the right price. So great, great, great question. All right. Do you have anything else? Do you want to show us? Do we have any more here? I think, oh, Kathleen, um, what are the member levels required in terms of access of the new products? Ooh. If, you, if you go to land here, I'll do it. Can we make it? I want to, I'm glad you're doing this, Jack, because I want everybody to know that these prices are not set in stone. That's right. The gold, silver, the gold, the silver is, but the. Um, if you go to Land Academy to the membership area, and you can see everybody who's a member is a silver member now. This is right here, Land Academy members. And then all these products that we're releasing are in what we just looked at this. Mm -hmm. So you have two choices. You can continue to be a silver member and then try out the new products uh, for the, the regular public price subscription amount. Let's just use a you know, land and uh, parcel fact as, a, as an example. If you want to use parcel fact, it'll cost an extra whatever. It'll end up being $100, $150 a month, just like you were walking in off the street. Or you can kick up your membership and it's your choice to this level and then it's all included. So for some people, it, it all, I've priced everything to make sure that it, the value of the next level, you would, it'll, it costs you half of what it would actually cost if you had an employee or a VA or uh, it's, it's meant to save you money and really create some value for, for the deals that you're doing. If you're doing three deals a month, does it make sense to do a gold membership? Absolutely not. But if you're doing 30 and, probably seven, I don't know, 50 to 60% of the, our members are doing more than that. It makes sense to do this. And then if you're just killing it, doing a ton of properties and you don't want any staff and you want everybody to do your deals and the whole thing, then it makes sense here. And if you're killing it, killing it, and you're just a superstar, like there's six people, five people right now, one of them is Jill's a uh, black level member. So then you, you, we, we, then we need to talk. Does that make sense, Joe? Mm -hmm. And what are those? Those are not set in stone. These numbers Correct. are not set in stone at all. Yeah, so don't. You can start budgeting seven fifty a month, but it's, you can. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but if you don't, the vast majority of people who have contacted me and they can't wait to be a gold member mm -hmm. is because they realize how much money it's going to save them it's and true. time. So, you either see the value or you don't. It's pretty simple. Most people I've talked to can't wait for it. Mm -hmm. especially with parcel fact. I will say that. Be... I'm sorry. All the, all these products that we're releasing, there's a free, you get to try them out for free for, for a while. So you'll, you'll know if you, if you love it or, or don't long before you have to make a commitment at all. Very cool. You're welcome, Michelle. She also said thank you. And thank you for the podcast today. That was Good. fun. Yes, everyone, listen to listen. We have a couple coming out next week um, of members that we did podcasts with recently. So we'll have a lot of it'll be a lot of good stuff. So who do we have? Oh, uh, Rowdy and Kiria, and who else? Khalil. Khalil. Yep. And then the week after that, um, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. As, uh, as we said last week, the, this is now a standing call with the exact same number. So um, it's, and it's at the same time, every, it's three o'clock Arizona time every single week. So in, you probably notice now there's no more invitations. So just log on just like it did now and, and join us and we'll see you mm -hmm. next week. Thank you, Joe. Great. Thank you.